Hello and welcome to this video presentation of Hazmap 3D. My name is James McNay and I'm the Lead Technical Safety Consultant here at Micropack Engineering. In this video I'm going to demonstrate the newly launched commercially available fire and gas mapping tool, Hazmap 3D, and in particular the flame detection mapping capability within the software. Fire and gas mapping has now become a widely used industry buzz term. It's not new, although has gained prevalence in the industry over the last five years. Micropack have been carrying out fire and gas mapping since the late 1980s and as such have specialised in the field, being involved in the development of many of the technologies seen in the market today, as well as developing most of the guidance related to fire and gas mapping. This means that any guidance released or updated over the last 20 years whether Micropack were involved in the design update or not, has been coded into our proprietary suite of mapping tools. As such, Micropack mapping tools provide compliance regardless of the document specified. This is of relevance when we review the subject of this video flame detection mapping, in which there are a significant number of variations in how to design these systems. Essentially, modelling the coverage of fire and gas devices in three dimensions is the easy part. Making these results useful for an engineer to interpret and justify compliance is what Micropack have been applying for decades, and all of these learnings have been incorporated into Hazmap 3D. I'll now demonstrate the features of Hazmap 3D's flame detection mapping. The first stage in creating our flame detection mapping report is to create a new project. Within this project, I'm going to import in a 3D model. So I bring in our 3D drawing. Now the 3D drawing that we're using here was created in inches. So our conversion tool to make sure that we use the appropriate scale um, is present here in Hazmap 3D. Obviously that's crucial when it comes to grading pieces of equipment and when it comes to incorporating in the specific flame detection and gas detection footprints when we get into our project. So I'm going to convert this from inches. The clip tool can be used when you're dealing with excessively large 3D models, um, or even if you want to break down your project into fire areas or fire zones. But in this case, we're just going to bring the whole 3D model into the project. The next stage in the project is to add some grades. So I'm just going to save our project at the moment. Okay, so now we can start to add some grades. Now the tutorial grading for the free trial, which is what I'm currently using for this video demonstration, is locked to the kind of grading rules that you would see in BP's group practice, GP3085. Now the reason we're doing this is to demonstrate the power of Hazmap 3D in complying with the various guidance documents on the market. GP3085 is widely regarded as having the most subtleties when it comes to compliance, all of which are not immediately clear upon review of the document. Therefore, improving Hazmap 3D complies with this document shows how advanced this 3D mapping tool is. It's important to note, however, that the full version of the software is completely user configurable as to what required guidance is to be met, whether that's to BP standard or any other um, operator standard. More and more standards are becoming more and more prevalent in the industry, so guaranteeing compliance to these guidance documents is becoming more and more important in fire and gas design. It's important to note at this point as well that what Hazmap 3D provides is a direct line to Micropack's hugely experienced fire and gas consultancy team in Aberdeen, who have been carrying out these reviews for decades and can assist with any queries on either the software itself or the methodologies which are being applied, where these methodologies came from and the impact that can have on your overall fire and gas design. So I'm just going to add some grades into this small process area here. I'm just simply going to double click on the vessel and we'll grade this grade A. Obviously remember what grade A actually means can be completely user configured. Um, the distance that extends from the vessel and also the kind of target fire sizes we typically expect to see whether it's a 1 out of N or 2 out of N voted system. We'll add another grade A. Obviously these grades are based on the escalation potential. So if we're in a very high risk area, we want to detect a smaller fire size so we can prevent this from escalating to a point where it would become difficult to control and mitigate. Obviously not all 3D models will 
set these objects as, as a single object, these process vessels as one single object. And what Hazmat 3D allows the user to do is simply select a number of different components of that single vessel and then grade those together. This essentially means that the grading process has never been easier. It's a very, very useful tool within Hazmat 3D. Now that our area has been graded, we're going to add some flame detectors to the scene. It's important to note that in addition to the various operator methodologies and independent guidance being added into Micropack's mapping tools over the years, we've also added a full independently verified detector library, as and when detectors are brought to the market. This means that the user has the ability to apply the most accurate footprints for flame detectors, whether directly from the manufacturer data sheets or where the real-life environmental effects are to be incorporated into the flame detector viewing distance. Put simply, this results in Hazmap 3D providing the most accurate assessments of coverage through Micropack's experience in flame and gas detection technologies, as verified by third parties. So let's begin to add our flame detectors to the scene. I'm just going to hide those grades in the, in the, the uh, 3D viewer. Um, this allows the area not to get too congested. As you can see, when an entire deck has graded equipment, it can start to get quite messy. So with the individual file being checked, this means that the grade is still present in the model, but hidden from the view. We go into our add flame detector mode from the top right hand corner here, and I'm simply going to double click on a face to add a detector onto that face. Now the detector's orientation will be projected exactly out from that face. This makes it quite easy where the model already has the 3D detectors modeled in. This means that you can simply go around the area, double click on the detector faces, and the orientations of the detectors will automatically be present in the model. At this point, we're just going to change some of the flame detector parameters. We're going to put a detector tag. We'll change the model of the detector. Now, this is quite an important point here to note on the detector library. Each individual flame detector has a very unique footprint. So if we were to go to the X3301, obviously we have different variants of this device, three sensitivity settings. The user gets information on the technology for this device. Obviously we get the coordinates, the pan, the tilt. At this point we'll just change the pan and tilt to a more appropriate um, angle at the moment. And we'll show the obstructed cone. So here we can see that the detector is essentially casting shadows within the field of view. We can see that it has been hindered by the deck and this is a more appropriate view of the flame detector's capabilities. But we can also see the impact of the cone that the detector provides. If we switch the obstructed cone off, you can see this teardrop style shape. If we were to change this detector to a Draeger Flame 5000 visual detector, you would see that cone of vision change and it becomes more like a pizza slice shape. And this is due to the filtered edge effect of the flame detector's field of view. All of this information is, is completely coded into the software and independently verified by third parties. And what it does is it gives the user the most accurate flame detection assessments on the market. So for the purpose of this assessment, we're just going to reduce the sensitivity of the device down to 50% of the maximum, 44 meters, which is taken from the detector data sheet. And this is just to keep the field of view within the 3D model, to keep the, the example nice and tidy. Okay. So we're happy with that detector location, and we're just going to add in a second device on the other side. Okay. The software has obviously remembered that we're using the Flame 5000 at a 50% sensitivity. So again, making the user experience as easy as possible. And we're going to put in an appropriate pan and tilt of the device, 20 degrees down from horizontal. And that looks okay. Now, obviously, a lot of these systems will have a requirement for redundancy in voting. Um, but for the purpose of this simple demonstration, we're just going to leave it with two flame detectors just to show the 3D assessment being carried out. So we're now in a position to carry out that assessment. So the first thing we need to do to run our assessment is get an idea of the shoebox volume that we want to analyse. 
So in order to do that, we need two coordinates, the coordinates of the origin and the coordinates of the extent that we would want the assessment to cover. Obviously, as far as the assessment is concerned, we're, because it's flame detection, we're not looking at the entire volume. We're looking specifically at the previous graded areas, um, as we saw earlier on when we set our, our hazard grades. But we still need to specify that shoebox volume. So to do this, I'm just going to double click on this point here and we get our coordinates. Now this is going to be the rough coordinate of our origin and I'm going to double click on the top right hand corner and this is the rough coordinate of our extent. So I now put those those uh, coordinates straight into our assessment key which we see in here so approximately 20 for X, 10 for Y, 18.8 uh, in the Z. Now the extents obviously have been rounded up to make sure that we engulf the entire uh, graded area. Um, we've put an extent of 20 meters, an extent of 15, and then in the Z we've selected 4 meters as an appropriate vertical um, assessment volume. Okay, now the number of Z steps is essentially how many slices we want to be shown within that 4 meters um, which has been specified. The representative Z that we see here is essentially representing the, the, the slice out of those 20s, which slice is to be automatically exported into your report. Now this is quite important from an engineering point of view. Now the 3D assessment that you're about to see is very nice, it's the pretty pictures that we see or that we want to see from fire and gas mapping. It looks good in the, the, the project meetings when you're demonstrating the assessments and it's also nice obviously we can provide a, a free 3D viewer of the assessments which you can obviously give to your end client so they can navigate the model and have a look at the full 3D coverage. What the engineers want to see is a top-down look at the at the assessment, the more traditional 2D slice that we would see from, from the traditional mapping softwares. So that's still provided in the new assessment as well as the 3D outputs. So we're now in a position to run the assessment. Now what we can see being generated here, um, what the green would represent is 2 out of n voted coverage um, for these specific grading rules which have been set um, before carrying out the project. Obviously if this was a 1 out of n voted system the results would look entirely different. Similarly if we had different target fire sizes it would look different once again. The important no thing to note is that we have in the same assessment a split of the grade A coverage and the grade B coverage. So if you remember before, we had two grade A pieces of equipment and one grade B piece of equipment. Now this is the same regardless of how many different grades you have within the scene. You will get split percentage coverages for each individual grade. And this is crucial when it comes to demonstrating compliance with most of the major engineering technical practices in the market today. So to very quickly run through what these, these colours mean, we have green for 2 out of N coverage, where also the target fire size has been detected by both detectors, and that's for both alarm and control action. What the orange represents is our alarm only coverage, where only one detector can detect the target fire size. And obviously our red stands for the blind spots, where neither detector can detect the specified target fire size. Okay. Now the assessment which has been run here is obviously a very simple assessment with only three grades. So we have some very basic percentage coverages here, fairly basic detector layout. Um, but the assessment method will stand up with much larger assessments, as we can see in the tutorial model which has been prepared earlier on. Now this model is available in the 14 day free trial, so you can try this out yourselves but you can see that we have a much larger area of coverage here. Obviously any areas larger than this you would want to start splitting up. Um, usually your fire zones are going to dictate um, what you include in a single assessment, but obviously you can run multiple assessments in HazMap completely seamlessly. Now we can also show the grade map which was provided in the example assessment. So we've got some grade A, some grade B and some grade C. Um, and then a reverse of the tutorial which we, we just ran through there with a grade A vessel and two grade B vessels. 
Obviously these grades are entirely dependent on the performance target stage where you try and analyse the risks and the potential escalation of those, those risks. In the assessment we can obviously see some additional grades um, or additional coverage percentages with yellow, obviously there are none present in this particular assessment, and also brown. Now what these stand for, these are very specific to individual methodologies, um, where you could perhaps not detect your smaller fast response alarm target fire size, but when it grows to a stage where you're, you have an acceptable control action target fire size, you would get a 2 out of N voted coverage. Now we would call this late alarm, but with sufficient control action. And this essentially nails down the target fire size methodology, which is completely complied with in HAZMAP 3D. That's obviously only one of the um, methodologies which HAZMAP 3D can comply with, but it's probably the most common um, method of design in, in fire and gas globally. In the next video, we'll be reviewing the same model, however, from the point of view of analysing gas detection coverage. So if you have any questions regarding the software, either technical or commercial, or if you would like a free 14-day trial, please don't hesitate to get in touch with myself or any of my colleagues at Micropack Engineering, details of which are provided in the video description. I would also encourage anyone with an interest in fire and gas mapping or other fire and gas related topics to register at the Micropack forums or on the fire and gas mapping discussion board on LinkedIn, details of which are also provided in the video description. Thank you very much for watching.